Oh, bees are fascinating animals in terms of the behavior and cognitive capacities that they have. If you think about it, bees live in a home to which they must return. So they fan all out over an area perhaps roughly the size of um, the London congestion charging zone from a hive. Then after foraging from flowers for an hour or so, they return back to that hive. That's not an easy task if you have a brain the size of a pinhead. Now, as they do this foraging and, and spatial navigation task highly efficiently, of course, they also have to be careful shoppers. They have to find out which flowers are the best ones um, in terms of nectar and pollen offerings and then fo focus their foraging efforts on just these flowers, disregard others. So they have to make comparisons. They have to be good economists as they're doing that. And in the process of doing that, of course, display a wide range of learning and memory behaviors. They learn to associate the yellow flowers with reward and to disregard that the blue ones in any one habitat might be um, less good. Or a week later, it might be the other way around. So they might have to relearn which flowers are the good ones and the bad ones. In our recent research, we have tried to crack this problem of how bees navigate through space by gluing little transponders on the backs of bees and tracking their behavior using radar over large areas. And we found, for example, how bees solve a simple version of the traveling salesman problem, that you need to visit a number of cities, for example, in England uh, in the course of the day while minimizing travel routes and travel distance. Yet it's one that bees need to solve somehow all the time because they do have to visit multiple flowers in order to fill up once, typically hundreds of thousands of flowers in order to fill up their tummy with nectar once and then fly home, unload and come back to these flowers, ideally in a better sequence than they've used before. And we've recently received a very generous grant from the European Research Council to study this behavior further. And we're now especially interested in tracking multiple bees at the same time to see how far they forage, how they interact during foraging, and possibly also to understand how these spatial foraging patterns assist plants with their pollination, as well as um, how these spatial foraging patterns link to the, the risk of disease transmission in bees. Well, one important factor in bee disease, as well as any other disease, is how a disease spreads from one individual to another, and in the case of bees, from one colony to another. Factors like the disappearance of bees from many habitats and the honeybee phenomenon of colony collapse disorder will have very profound impacts on us humans. Of course, one third of the food you consume is dependent on pollinator services. So, of course, with the service of pollination gone, you could still pollinate flowers by artificial means, by employing laborers to do pollination um, with paint brushes and glass houses and so on, which is, for example, how it used to be done with tomatoes before the advent of commercial bumblebee pollination. But that's an extremely expensive service, and so the prices of vegetables and fruits would go through the roof.